Okay, so we're going to start off with a uh, tour of the external anatomy. Um, this is a, a squid. Uh, the species, or sorry, the genus name is Loligo. Um, small little guy. Uh, one of the things you might notice right away on the skin um, is, is that it has a very mottled appearance. There are lots of tiny little um, colored areas, little dots. Those are called chromatopores. Those are specialized uh, pigment cells and those are what's responsible for, for the amazing color changes that squids are capable um, of doing. And they do that um, for camouflage, um, to attract mates, for defense. There's, there's all kinds of interesting reasons why they do that. They're, they're basically used in communication. So understand that that's what you're looking at there. Um, now let's orient our cells a little bit. As you know, um, squids belong to the group called cephalopods. Cephalopod essentially means head foot. Um, you saw a foot in the in the bivalve. Um, the head of the squid is homologous. In other words, it has the same um, origin as the foot of the bivalve. Okay, so that means that this is then the ventral region of the animal down here, which makes this other end, this is the dorsal region of the animal, okay? Um, this surface here, the one with the little point, this is the anterior surface. So we flip it over, then we know that this side, the opposite, must be the posterior surface. And the clue there is that uh, there is the presence of this, this siphon. Okay, that's the funnel through which uh, water is ejected and ink is ejected and uh, gametes are ejected. This is a multi-purpose siphon and that's on the posterior side. The other things that we can see obviously um, at this end there are a pair of fins. Okay, so one fin, two fins here. And those are obviously used in uh, locomotion. Um, they use these to swim, um, to maintain balance, change direction, that sort of thing. At the other end, at the head, there are a pair of eyes. Um, they're not very well preserved in the specimen, but this is where the eye would be here and another eye here. Um, you can see it's very large relative to the body and there's a hard structure in there. It's, it's, it's a lens similar to ours, um, although not exactly the same. Um, and then we also have uh, 10 little appendages down here. There are two which are very long. You can see how much longer they are than the other ones. These are the tentacles and the tentacles are covered in these great little um, suckers which are used to help grasp prey. Um, the ones that are not tentacles, the short ones, there's eight of them and these are the arms. Okay, so these are the arms here and these are more used in handling food and pulling things to the mouth and if we open the arms you can see the mouth in there and that also contains the beak. All right. So that is um, a basic tour of the external anatomy of this animal. Um, this is a male specimen. You can see I've pinned down the mantle here to expose the mantle cavity. Um, so this is the siphon down here, the funnel, just to orient yourself. So let's have a look and see what we can find here. Um, the first most obvious structures might be these long conspicuous feathery organs running down either side. These are the gills, obviously, which are involved in gas exchange. And they attach up here at the same region as this, this pinkish structure. This is the multiple components of the heart and some of the main veins and arteries. The heart is, consists of three sections. You can see there's a little lobe here and another little lobe on this side. Um, those are the branchial hearts. There's also a central heart right here that's called the systemic heart. The branchial hearts, which are closest to the gills, actually are responsible for pumping blood to and from the gills. And the systemic heart is responsible for pumping blood um, to the remainder of the, of the body. Okay. The next thing that looks pretty obvious is this dark region right here. This is the ink sac. Uh, many of you know already that squids are able to eject ink. So this is where the ink is produced. And you can see that um, there's a little funnel that comes all the way down here. And there's the end of it there. And that is able then to release ink out through the siphon, um, either as a defensive mechanism or a distraction, that sort of thing. We can also see, I'll just tip the tray a little bit so it's a little more obvious, on this side here there's this whitish finger-like structure right here that I'm lifting right here. That is the stomach, okay? It is in close proximity with the cecum, which is this long 
whitish soft bit right here that produces different digestive enzymes so that's that's involved in food digestion um, once food is digested there is a, an intestine obviously that passes down the length of the body a lot of it's hidden by some of these other structures but if we go down far enough down towards the siphon we can find right here there's a small uh, tube right here. That's actually now the rectum at this point. So the intestine is passed all the way down to the rectum and anus. And then again, f the uh, waste material is ejected out through the siphon. All right. Um, now this is a male, as I said, so we'll have a quick look at the male anatomy. Right here, there's a clear... Uh, finger-like structure right here. That is the male testis. That's the site of sperm production. Beside it is the vas deferens. It's, it's all coiled up in the peritoneum there, but there's a long sort of loopy uh, coil of vas deferens, and that's where the sperm passes through. If I lift up the guts here, um, you can actually see there's a whitish tube running the length right here. Um, this is the penis. So sperm is produced in the testis, moves through the vas deferens, through the penis, and then again um, out the siphon. Okay. When I lifted this, you probably noticed this black area right here. This is the pen. This is made of chitin, and it's homologous to the, um, the, the valves or the shell in the bivalve. In uh, many cephalopods, there is no um, real proper shell. It's been reduced, and structure similar to this is all that's left. This runs the length of the animal and, and does provide support. In addition to the pen, there are some areas uh, with some uh, cartilage. You can see a little uh, knob right here. There's another one over here. There's more in the siphon here. So there are other um, hardened areas of cartilage that um, provide support in addition to the pen. And I think that's, uh, we'll stop there with the mail. Okay, so here's the female squid. Um, I won't show too many of the same structures that we just saw in the male, but I'll just orient you again. We have the siphon down here. It's a little more squashed. Um, this one's a little older specimen. It's been preserved a little bit differently, and that's why the color is different. We can still see um, the gills here and up here. Okay. Now the one thing that should be immediately apparent is these large beige structures on top of everything else. We did not see these in the male. These are the nidimental glands. They're only found in the female and these are uh, responsible for creating a, a secretion that covers the egg masses before they're, they're ejected through the siphon um, to be then uh, later develop into little larvae. So, so these, are, these are the nidimental glands. Um, we also see this large reddish mass all through here, up here. We can see it underneath as well. Um, this is the ovary, okay? There's one very large ovary in the female. And you can see here uh, the peritoneum has ripped away a little bit and it's exposed some of the eggs in there. Um, here's a few um, eggs from another female so you can see uh, that's what that looks like inside. So that's that's the ovary, the site of the egg production. Okay, uh, down here we have a small uh, accessory gland that's called the oviductal gland. This actually produces the shells uh, that go on the egg. So this creates the egg shell. Okay, um, there is an oviduct. Um, through which the, uh, the ready-to-go eggs would pass before they were released. Um, unfortunately, in this specimen, without um, really taking her to bits, it's um, not going to be immediately apparent. It's buried under some of the other structures here. But um, just understand that the eggs are produced in the ovary. Uh, the shells are initially uh, that cover them are created here in the oviductal gland. Uh, the nidimental gland creates another secretion that basically bundles these little eggs into nice little packets and then those packets are ejected out through the siphon. Um, the only other things I'll just point out here, we can also see the ink sac on the female. It's this dark area down here, down below. And um, one other structure that's kind of interesting, you'll see this on the male also. Um, this is a, uh, a muscle that is used in um, retracting the siphon. So the siphon itself can be uh, moved forward and back and there are, there's one of these uh, structures on either side and that's what those are involved in. So that is the female.